So we're going to talk about measures of variability. And variability is defined as a single summary score that describes the spread of observations within a distribution. So what that means is we have already established what measure of central tendency we're going to use to describe our distribution. Remember, that's a single score that best describes everybody. After we've done that, now let's see if we can come up with a single score that describes how everybody clusters around that central tendency. So let's use the mean as an example. Let's say this is, these two distributions are the average height, and we're going to use the mean of 5.6. We can see that this first distribution it has a mean of 5.6, but the cluster around that mean is much tighter, much smaller than the cluster over here for this other distribution. And so let's say we're talking about this first distribution. Let's say it's Rockettes. And I don't know if you know what the Rockettes are, but they're a bunch of dancers that have a real pretty line, and they all line up, and then they kick, and the line's real pretty when they're dancing. Well, to be a Rockette, you have to be about 5'6". And so there's very little variability around that 5'6 height requirement. Some people are a little taller, some people are a little shorter, but for the most part, they're all 5'6". And that's because the line wouldn't look as pretty if there was someone that's 4'8", and someone that's 5'10", something like that. And then if we looked at, let's say, a normal population that also had a mean of 5'6", but wasn't dancers, we might see that they have a much wider variability. So we have some shorter people down here and some taller people up here, but they also have a mean of 5'6". So what we're going to do in this lecture is learn how to describe, once we've established what the measure of central tendency is, and most likely it will be the mean, how can we describe how well the scores cluster around that mean? And that's going to be our measure of variability. So we're going to talk about three measures of variability, just like we had three measures of central tendency. We're going to do this lecture a little differently. Um, I'm first going to give you an overview of all three, and then in a separate lecture, I'm going to describe um, mathematically how they work. It kind of just works better that way. What we'll do is we'll use this fake data set, and just to keep it simple for me, uh, let's just say the, the numbers are one, two, three, four, five. It could be dollars in your pocket, and somebody has one dollar, somebody has two dollars, and somebody has five dollars. The reason I did this is because the mean of this distribution is three, which keeps it simple for me mathematically in thinking about what that means. So now let's talk about the three measures of variability. The first one we have is range. I'm pretty certain you've been introduced to the topic of range before in high school. So the range is defined as the difference between the smallest and the largest observations. So if I look at my example here, the smallest amount of uh, money someone had in their pocket was $1. The largest amount was $5, so we see they have a range of $4. Now, I want to remind you that let's just say that the dollar in their pocket was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That would be 15 minus 11. My range would still be $4. So the range is really just an indication of how many points there are between the lowest and the highest. You can see that's not really a very useful number. I mean, it's, it's a good start, but it really just kind of ignored everything in the middle. If we were talking about those rockettes, it would just tell us what the shortest rockette is and the tallest rockette, but it really wouldn't tell us how well everyone clustered around the mean. So the range is not as useful as it could be, and it really doesn't target our goal, which is to describe how well everybody clusters around the mean. So our next two measures of variability actually do that quite well. And so... We're going to put them out there, but don't be intimidated by their names. <laughs> the first one is called the variance. The definition of variance is the mean of all squared deviations from the mean. I know that sounds confusing, and that's why I'm going to take a separate lecture to just describe to you what that means. After that, we're going to learn what the standard deviation is. And the standard deviation is going to be the end-all, be-all for us. For statistics, we're really going to just take that standard deviation and run with it. And so the definition of the standard deviation is kind of what we've been going for the whole time, which is a rough measure of the average amount by which the observations deviate from the mean. By the way, the standard deviation is just simply the square root of the variance. So it's a nice mathematical transition. Let me quickly explain what the standard deviation is so you can kind of understand the goal, and then we'll look at the other video to understand mathematically what's happening. So let's say I have this data set of one, two, three, four, five, um, and somebody walks in the room, and I'm trying to guess, uh, you know, how many dollars they have in their pocket based on the data I've collected so far. Let's say these people walk in the room. This person walks in the room. They have one dollar in their pocket. I don't know that. I know that the mean dollar in the pocket is three dollars. So I guess, hey, I think you have three dollars in your pocket. 
but I'm going to be wrong, right? If they only have $1 and I guess three, I'm wrong by $2. Let's say I look at somebody who has $2 in their pocket and I guess three, I'm going to be wrong by $1. So for each of these numbers, I'm going to be wrong by a little bit unless they have exactly $3 in their pocket and I won't be wrong at all. But if I'm wrong by a little bit, I kind of want to know on average, how wrong was I? If I look at all these people and I guess that their, mean, their, their score is the mean, how wrong would I be in using that to guess their actual dollar in their pocket? So the standard deviation is going to be on average, how wrong was I if I used the mean to guess what your score is? And that's a nice way for us to understand the entire distribution because we can get a sense for what the measure of central tendency is with the mean, and then we can guess how scores deviate from that mean, and on average, how much do they deviate. So let's go check out that other video to understand mathematically what happens with the variance and the standard deviation, and then we'll continue to talk about how we can use those with descriptive statistics.